Hello everybody, Princess DeBerry here, and we're back with our November recap video. My oh my, what a long month and short month we, November was. We went, we went a little wild in November, like w amount of food items wild. Oh my goodness, from Acker Shoes to Takumi Te, all of these amazing things, Tusker opened, Kona opened, oh my goodness, the number of places that opened. We, br we brought the food and they brought the flavor. Now so. we're just waiting on 1900 Park Fair. Oh God, we will <laughs> never be free. We will never be free. Let's just start with our drinks. Open some things. No cocktails this time. This time we're doing it old school style. We're doing burrs. No cork on mine. I knew it. The one time I thought there was going to be cork. Watch, and there wasn't. Watch the Guardian's Holiday Special. Yes, Do it's that. really good. Absolutely recommend that. Uh, on your Christmas lists or holiday lists, whatever holiday you celebrate. It should be a year description of Disney+. Plus. That one and um, mm -hmm. Hawkeye is one of our annual watches now. As we, we didn't think it was going to be. Year. We thought Hawkeye was going to be the one that we watched the most. The, the least. The least. Was it? Is it? Originally we thought we were going to watch it the most. The most? And now I wasn't it's, into Hawkeye. I, I mean, I was into Hawkeye. <laughs> and then we got the Guardians Hawkeye yeah, special. Yeah, and we've watched that. I've, I've watched it more than him, actually. It's, and it's so much more I'm listening to the album. Or holidays, really. I've been using the song on our TikTok and our Instagram. I can't get enough of it. No, she can't. So, uh, cheers to the coming holidays, however you celebrate. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas. 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 Yeah. Cheers. Ramadan. Ooh. Oh, this is so good. This is, says an, a nice chauffe. That's exactly what this is. Chauffe. Okay. And I got um, framboise strawberry. I love me some framboise. So my best entree for the month of November uh -oh. was the first place that we went to, November 1st, um, Tusker House, the Cauliflower Bunny Chow. It's not as good as the, or it's, sorry, it's better than the Impossible Bunny Chow that I get at Nomad Lounge. I thought Lounge. that was hard to beat. I loved it. I gave it a five. We really should make Bunny Chow at home. Oh, I don't know yeah. why we haven't done that. I don't know. We will eventually. We'll do it. No. For my best entree of the month, we have the Open Turkey Smash from Polite Pig. That thing. I had doubts. Now, I was never an open-faced turkey sandwich person, like ever. Didn't see the interest in it. What didn't care whatsoever. It's like, okay, half a sandwich with some potatoes and some meat on it. Until the princess introduced me to vegan tofurkey open. Well, I mean, sandwiches. mine was also Hamburger Hamlet inspired. And that's a classic Los Angeles restaurant. So Of which I know nothing. Los so, Angeles represent. When I saw this on the menu, I'm like, I have to try an actual open faith turkey sandwich. Floored. Absolutely floored. I am upset that it's only that was only a limited time like Thanksgiving holiday sandwich because that thing I still daydream about that sandwich. I'll be sitting in the corner by myself and just like we'll have a moment. We'll have a moment. That was definitely my best of entree with a, a runner up at Acker Church. The uh, forgive me for our <laughs> Norwegian audience. I know we have like one or two of you out there. The Kakurker the Cot the name will be down here somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in one of these corners. But those meatballs, that blend of the pork was absolutely amazing. I wish we had like a quick service, not just like the cafe that's in the Norwegian Pavilion. And I would just go get the meatballs every time we went to Epcot. That would be my everyday. If we weren't doing YouTube, that would be my every Epcot meal <laughs> without fail. So cheers to the best. Entree. Worst entree. Uh oh. Now for me, I'm kind of biased because this actually was a really good dish. I just rated it a two because I don't like mushrooms. Yes. But the vegan Philly at Universal that's happening right now is the Holiday Festival. Really, really good. I just think it would be better if it was if there was a different like jackfruit or And it, it was a ridiculous serving size. And we, we did hear after from the rest of the plant-based community, because there's a lot of you here, and we talk to some of the other ones. Universal that, Orlando Vegans. Yes, you actually can get like peppers and stuff on there. Sausage you just had to ask. Peppers and um, onions. onions. You just had to ask, which is weird, but there, there actually is the option when they have it. I guess they were out a lot when we first got it, so it wasn't even an option for us. But if, I think ours had it. Yeah. We didn't ask for it. They just put it they on. They put it on. But yeah, it was an option. But uh, 
The vegans loved it. You just hate mushrooms. Yeah, I just mushrooms I just don't like mushrooms. If I liked mushrooms, that would have been rated the much higher. Yep. And the worst for me, oh god. I love Mitsukoshi as a company. The things they provide to Epcot and Disney Springs, but the Yisake takoyaki stick with like the microwaved soggy twinky oh god, texture yeah. top that thing was gross. Absolutely disgusting. A shame that it's even called takoyaki. Or octopus. I, I wish if I could take that that thirty seconds of my life back, I would do that. Terrible. Avoid it at all costs. Cheers, Cheers. to them. Not them. We don't miss you. Best drink. Oh. Our best drink for me was actually a coffee with liquor in it that I got um, after dinner at Toledo on Thanksgiving, and I rated that a 4.5. Cafe Carajillo? 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 Carajillo. Carajillo. It was pretty tasty, but I'm not a coffee and liquor person. I've tried. It's just not me. As for my best drink of the month, uh, sort of the end of my hunt for the best IPA, even though I hate IPAs, I finally found an IPA that I only liked, I loved. And now, of course, I can't find it anyway. Anywhere, the uh, Terrapin Luau Crunkles at Kona was magnifique. Not that an accent matches the restaurant whatsoever. It doesn't. Cares? It's fine. Cheers to the best. And the worst drinks of the month. We had a lot, a lot of contenders for the worst drink of the month. We did. And for me, it was the Osaka Sunset at Yisake. I did not like that. I gave it a one and a half. It was sort of an inorganic, juicy mess. with not a lot of alcohol in it, which is kind of a problem. You rated it low as well. Yeah. But I had, I had other competition for the worst. And I gave it to the Blue Viking from Akashirsh. It was, um, it was not great. It was like pew, blue carousel and garbage. I just didn't, I did not enjoy womp, myself. Womp. We had a lot of like ups and downs at Akershus. It was very all over the place. We enjoyed our time, but we felt it was overpriced. Yeah. And we liked some food, but we hated a lot of it. Yeah. Agreed. So cheers to the worst. Cheers to the worst. All right. Nobody's going to miss you anyway. <laughs> The best. Best appetizer or side. Now for me, all this talk of Akershus, um, they had this beautiful red cabbage that was cooked in red wine and cloves. And that is something that I, I really want to make at home. It just sounds so good. It shouldn't really be that hard either. I rated it a 4.75. And like, if they had a quick service place, that would be the thing that I would get. And I would put that on one of those Germany pretzels with some mustard. And I would go to town. There are some ideas for Disney. Expand the cafe to be an all-service Norwegian quick service. Just saying. And then also, for the best appetizer side for me, it's also from Akershus, was the Killig o Malbor, which was basically a uh, chicken and dumpling soup, which was, like, warm to heart. Like, better than any chicken noodle soup I've ever had in my life. We gotta go to Norway, I think is what. I think we need to skip Disney. We need to go to actual Norway. We need Norway. to go to Norway. I'm not opposed to that idea at all. I like that idea too. And then a runner up was the, actually one of the Princess's Vegan dishes was the sun dried tomato nigiri from Kona. That nigiri plate for the vegans, whew. It was really good. That was, was actually so my favorite on that plate, the sun dried tomato. It was really delicious. Oh, very tasty. So cheers. Well, you to just took a sip. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Now, for the worst appetizer aside. We both agreed. Yes, we, we both did. did a zero. I spit it out. I wanted to. You wanted to spit it out. It was one of those rare times that he didn't. I choked it down because we were in. Had we been outside, I would have spit it out. <laughs> there mm -hmm. was a couple of different root vegetable options. The roasted root vegetables that was plant-based that was over at the carving section. We both rated a zero. It was like tasteless and hard and just not it enjoyable. It was terrible. Enjoyable. Flat zero. Flat zero. Cheers to may, Tusker. May you rest in root. Now, for the best desserts. We had a lot of desserts in November. Um, I actually only had like four. 
Okay, okay. I have a lot of desserts in November. Um, my favorite dessert of all the desserts was definitely the Harvest Garden dessert that we had at Toledo on Thanksgiving. That was the reason that we went to, we went out on Thanksgiving. That was 98% of the reason why we went to Toledo it, and she hasn't stopped talking about it. It was so good. It was like a little sweet potato goodness. Um. Got some crunch to it. It was so good. But then also I just want to mention the vegan, um, butter snowflake at Universal. Oh, it's tasty. That's my favorite dessert of the holidays, like period. That's the best one that I've had. That's fair. That's fair. Universal, you're doing good things. Keep it up. We're telling more vegans to go to Universal now than Disney. I never thought that would happen. It's true. So for my favorite dessert of the month, it was close for me because I really liked the Harvest Garden. But then I also loved the chestnut creme brulee I got at Takumi Te. It was so cute. It was very cute and a little owl thing. I, I have no use for one of those things, but I'd happily take one of those for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not even like a creme brulee person, so like that was very enjoyable for me. I liked it. I loved it. I loved Takumi Te. Takumi Te was back. an amazing experience. We need a reason to go back. Like, even though we haven't really brought it up a lot in this no, list. We really enjoyed the entire experience. The experience uh, we have the rate experiences overall for the month. Takumi Te was it. Oh, oh yeah. Takumi Te was. And that was like the one where he was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I didn't want to go. We just spent all this money at all these other places. I don't want to go. And I, I was mean, like, we're, we're going? We did go to some very expensive we're places. We're doing in it? Yeah, we, we did spend a lot of money. <laughs> Cheers to the best desserts. Or a worst dessert. Um, Unfortunately, we both agreed on the worst dessert. We did. This month. The falling for plant-based cupcake. Yes, we've been making it. Um, we've been making it a point to try more seasonal treats for those of you coming to visit the Walt Disney World Resort and Universal. Try to get some of those in because some of you don't come to the parks to eat full meals. Sometimes you just want a snack. So we're trying to do more of those, and uh, we can, with uniformity, say that the falling for plant-based for November was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I will have to say though, the one for December is even worse. So I actually miss the one from November now that we've had the one in December. Things are not looking up. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to the falling in the trash plant-based cupcake. Aww. Best festival food. Now, of course we had the festival of the holidays that started Which had on some Black surprises Friday. because normally that is our least favorite festival in any park of the year i'm surprised we had a really good time we do not look forward to festival we usually do not have a good time it's usually a struggle for us to make like our normal three complete videos or even want to go at all yeah, because there's sleeping. so few options this year but this year they surprised a little bit now they i would say like double the options with the two they had four but they're trying. It was a little They're bit trying. more than that because then like the entire nut stand is vegan and they don't tell you that. Yeah, we had, to, we had to ask. And there are some additional modifiable ones. There's a tostada that just isn't worth it to us. It's yeah. like a tortilla with beans and pickled onion and one sauce. Like why would I want to pay $5 for that? And I know no. that a lot of people have asked in the comments and on like our community tab like about us trying modified options for vegans. The issue is, is that yes, we can ask and for a modified do. option, we and we do, do sometimes. sometimes, but we don't like reviewing something that we can't guarantee that you're going to be able to get, or that you're going to have somebody that's going to be able to know for sure that they're not going to feed you something that you can't mm -hmm. eat. Because yes, we can go, but like when you come, you may get a cast member that doesn't know the food as well. They may not want to call a chef. They may just tell you because they don't want to deal with it. So it's very slippery slope, those modified options. So if it's an easy modification, usually we'll do it. But if you got to like take everything off and like the tostada, you're basically just getting like a fried tortilla with beans on it. Well, we've had the tostada in the we past have. and it, it hasn't, really hasn't changed. changed and it wasn't worth it then. So it it's doesn't feel worth, worth it now. It now so. so we will continue to do easy modifiable options when it's appropriate. But we're definitely not going to do them all. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, oh, we didn't even mention <laughs> our favorite foods. 
from the festival. We, we just went on a festival we tangent. tangent yes. So uh, favorite food for me is the impossible chorizo tamale. I cannot get enough of it. I cannot stop I eating it. I cannot stop talking about it. Over the two days went to the festival, you had four of those? I did. Um, <laughs> and then the peanut stew I also thought was Close really good and filling. Very At filling. The Africa outpost that I have railed and railed to try to get removed because an insult to African culture actually has a decent option this year. What do you think? And then for my favorite festival item of the year, best festival item of the year, was seared scallops from Canada, no less. I usually am not in a hurry to do the Canada booth. Uh, I've had some success. There was like the bone marrow thing a couple festivals ago, uh, which the princess absolutely hated eating me watch. But like seafood at the festivals is a very mixed bag. I've had some good stuff, but I had some really, really bad stuff. So I'm like, let me give Canada a shot to break my heart. And it was amazing. I licked the plate clean. Like, literally. Yeah, you did. If you haven't seen me lick the plate, go back and watch me lick the plate. <laughs> so cheers to the best. Around. Worst festival food. This is always an easy one. It's always the same thing. Yes, it is. The black and white cookie. It is absolutely awful. I feel like the black and white cookie strives to be the worst festival item when the festival holidays every year like the bomb hot sauce strives to be the worst hot sauce on hot ones on the first we feast youtube channel it's facts uh that <laughs> i this is not even getting better <laughs> it's just consistently bad every year you're nice enough to give it an actual rating i can usually yeah. not swallow this year i spit it out sorry for you people that don't like me seeing spit out food i censored it it, it, it was pretty awful it was pretty awful I rated it a two and a half. He gave it a zero. Yeah, straight zero. Black and white cookie? You're not so black and white. I don't miss you. Best. Best festival? Drank. 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 <laughs> Mine was actually, surprisingly, from France. Uh oh. They had this beautiful spiced pumpkin punch with oat milk and cognac. It was quite good. Oh, cognac is like my new obsession after we went on the wish. Ugh. I don't know where oh, I get amazing. pumpkin bits from, but I it's that, good. That's a fruit. The princess hates frozen drinks. She doesn't like them. And I don't, I'm not a pumpkin person mm. either. So to see her like both a pumpkin drink and a frozen drink was quite interesting. If we can learn how to make that at home, anybody hear new holiday yeah, no. frozen drink? No. No, I'm not gonna do that. No. I'm not gonna make a frozen drink at home. I tried, guys. I really did try. <laughs> oh. I rated that a five. So for my best festival drink was actually the hazel nutty cracker sweet stout. I'm not gonna rail the name. You know how I feel about names of drinks, but this one was actually fitting. At the, uh, I'm just the gonna call them the nut booth. <laughs> but the nut booth that took the place of my beloved swine brine, swine brine booth. Flames from fire. Uh, flavors of the fire. It was a bunch of nuts and a really good beer, surprisingly. And I gave it a, a 4.5. It was very good. Cheers. Mm. The best. I want the beer now. The worst festival drink. And there were a lot of takers. For me, it was the holiday cerveza from the Mexico stand. I gave it a two. It was just way too hoppy for me this year. Good. But I usually I like their because they're like organic beers, but not this time. I feel like I needed to branch out with the Mexican beer some. I feel like we always have like sort of the same-ish style of beer. And the beer is the most boring drink at every festival at that stand. The, yeah, the, really the margaritas are usually amazing and creative. The beers are just yeah. dull. So not a surprise. Now for me, the worst drink was the 81 Bay Brewing Company horchata beer. Because it did not taste like horchata. It just tastes like a gross regular beer. And if you're going to put a horchata in the name, truth in advertising. I was expecting something amazing and you gave me trash. And for that, you get it at my worst of the month. Cheers to the worst. May they rest in peace. Or not. <laughs> now, we had a lot of food this month, like we told you. So my Baron Sessie list got a little out of control this month. I'm going to say a little bit, I mean a lot of it. But, that's a benefit to you guys. It means more choices when you come here to visit. So, first off, the uh, Kellig O. Malabar Meatball from... Actually, that's a dumpling. Yeah, that's, that's a soup. The, the dumpling soup from Akashirsh. The Shiner Holiday Cheer. 
at the holiday festival at Universal, you can just skip every other drink at the festival. That's a good Just one. get the beer. That's the, the best thing, bar none. It's not even close in competition. And but it's, it's just amazing. And it's vegan. Get that. Uh, I have been looking for that beer all around town. Because it's like a Shiner Box seasonal, which I never see. Can't find it. But it's amazing. If you find it, let me know. And then the Impossible Trees of Tamale, which even though it's vegan, I loved it. And uh, I was able to steal a couple bites from the princesses before she just devoured all the plates because we did literally get four of those. And then the Seared Scalps, which was a surprise because I would normally eat seafood at the festival, or at least from the Canada booth. And it was actually good and not horribly priced. It was like six fifty, which is cheap. When you have, you know, booths like Italy charging double ahead for less. Oof. Yes, Burn. that was shade. <laughs> Then there was the carrot nigiri from Kona Cafe because that whole nigiri board was just amazing. The sautéed red quinoa that was on the princess's main plate. Not a plant-based food. I'm telling you, plant-based food is not all bad. Try a little bit. I promise you, it's just more food. <laughs> Your vegan will thank you. Then the pineapple is my safe word from Ply Pizza. It was one of our local eats. Uh, one of our new favorite vegan pizza restaurants was placed. Well, it's not just vegan. It's not just vegan, but they have a lot of vegan options. We still haven't tried them all. we got to go back and try more, actually. But usually for vegan pizza, we would go to Mellow Mushroom. Why well, pizza is our new favorite, and it's locally owned, so all the better. We'll probably go to both still. Oh, yes, we will. Then the open-faced turkey smash from the Plight Pig. <sighs> I miss that sandwich. Then my uh, Zinsai Monawasi fish salad from Takumite. The one with the claw? The claw. The claw. <laughs> yes. Uh, rice paper sushi roll from Takumite was is actually yours. Or was it mine? I think it was, I think it was mine. I think it was yours, actually. I think yes, it, was it was mine. yours. And the eel roll. God, I love eel. I would never attempt to cook eel on my own. That is rather intimidating for me, but I love unagi and all of its forms. And then the uh, Susai for also having Kumite. Even though the Kumite stuff didn't make a lot of my best and worst lists, overall it made a lot of my bare necessities lists. Like that is going to be one of those places, that, even though the price is a little expensive. A little. It's more Sierra Paul a lot of bit, prices. Lot of, I'd rather go to Kumite than Monsieur Paul any day of the week. Uh, it is so good. And if you can afford it or you want to treat yourself, if you love Japanese it. food, it's a must try. Do it's it. a must try. So then I also had the uh, Agamono from Takumite, the uh, Sakurajima from Takumite, <laughs> the, <laughs> the Jasmine Rice from Tusker House. We we both love that rice, that was but that my was like favorite. It was so good. We we labeled that Persian level rice. It was so good. It was so good. Yes. And then a rotisserie pork from Tusker House, which is one of my favorite entrees from there. Tusker House is quickly becoming one of our favorite buffets. I always it was before. thought I was, I was always from between that and Boma. We had the discussion it's today. It's still between that and Boma. And Tusker Tuskers feel like it's climbing the ladder. Especially now that the dishes got a lot more unique than they were immediately post panini. Yeah, yeah. But not not as good as they were pre. All right, so my list is just as long as bears and ridiculous. So the Beyond Sausage from Akershus, I thought that was amazing, especially when you had it with the cabbage and the um, mashed potatoes together. Absolutely. I loved the Blue Viking, even though he hated it on my necessity list. The Vegan Butter Snowflake Cookie that I mentioned previously that's located at Crescent Moon Bakery inside of Islands of One Adventure. No. I, I realize this today, and this is both of our faults because we both maintain this list. It's actually not Crescent Moon. It's, it's, it's Croissant Moon. Croissant Moon? <laughs> it's Croissant it, and Moon. And it's bakery. a croissant shaped like a crescent. <laughs> this entire oh time. Oh my goodness. It's, it's Croissant Moon. Nobody corrected this. Welcome Shame to, on you. Welcome to our life yep. where we pronounce everything wrong. And it was Croissant Moon Baker. I was like, that can't be right. That's my fault. Oh, that makes a lot of I sense. I always look at words and pronounce them. <laughs> My way and not the right way. Um, the Spice Pumpkin Punch from the Festival of the Holidays. The Impossible Chorizo Tamale from the Festival of the Holidays. The Sun-Dried Tomato Nigiri from Kona. Like I said, so it's my favorite from there. The Margarita Flatbread from Mama Melrose. Gotta, gotta love that day uh, cheese. The Animal Lover from Playa Pizza, also that is the very delicious. Meatiest vegan pizza I've ever eaten so in my life. So good. 
the apple cider whiskey sour from Polite Pig. That's that my go-to. That thing haunts her dream to Disney Springs. So Second we go there, she's like, can we go to Polite Pig? Can we go to Polite Pig? The asparagus nigiri from Takumite, the red pepper nigiri from Takumite, the rice paper sushi roll from Takumite, all of those, like they took the nigiri to a whole nother level with flavor. It wasn't just like a raw vegetable with some beautifully seasoned rice wrapped in seaweed. There was like a lot of like pickling and marinating and lots of like flavors that happen with those nigiris, which is why they're so good. Experience. Yes. The strawberry yuzu sorbet, which Oh my God, was it amazing? And I've never seen a sorbet like that before. It was All almost like, like it was so good. It was almost like Japanese dipping nuts. It was so good. Oh yeah, totally. Um, and then the shusai from Takumite, the Brussels sprouts from Toledo, the braised gigante beans she from Toledo. Beans. I love gigante beans. I wish I could cook them more at home. The harvest garden from Toledo. I wish it was around for more than a week. The jasmine rice from Tusker, I will never stop talking about that. The cauliflower bunny chow from Tusker House, also I will never stop talking about that. And then my beloved plant-based tuna sandwich that I had at World Premier Food Court that tuna, will tuna. always be on the necessity list. Every time we go to a resort that has that tuna sandwich, I want it. even if she doesn't want one, I'll get she it will me. go and check. And if this, she's one that's like a good number, because we told you, you need to check each one to yeah, make sure you get a the ratio. proper amount of filling. She'll get one anyway and just take it home, even if she's not hungry. <laughs> it's, it's a good snack for later, and it's a really good lunch. I our, love it. Our princess. I love it. <laughs> so that has been our recap for November. We have a lot of, lot of exciting things for you planned for December. Take along with us, have an awesome time. You've seen some of it already. Yes, you have, because we uh, slacked on this video, or I slacked on getting this together for the month. There's been a lot of things going on, but thank you for sticking with us and sticking around for the recap. If there's anything you guys want to see, as always, the comments below are the place to find us. And hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Whoop. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear's going to eat himself into this couch and make me have to buy a new couch. You heard the girl. <laughs>